hello my lovely people good morning good afternoon good evening good night welcome to my youtube channel my name is jane if this is the first time that you are laying your eyes on this beautiful chick thank you so much for stopping by and i am here cutting my okra just to make my soup i just finished making one video and uh, making this one so my lovely people i saw a video um of from channels television that video from channels television was so beautiful oh and i cannot keep it to myself she has all the right question. Muhammad Buhari coming out to tell Nigerians that whatever I have done to you, oh, forgive me. And then the Garuba Shehu man came out. You guys will watch the video. I want you guys to watch the video. I want you guys to leave your message. And my thing about that particular video is to let Garuba Shehu, eh, that may, may Muhammad Buhari do him. May what night may what um Muhammad Buhari has done to Nigerians happen to him and his family? He he's asking for forgiveness from Nigerians. She uh, uh she asked all the good question and that one said, Oh Nigerians, they are they have good uh, good hearts, they will forgive him. And I am here to tell you, I don't know which Nigeria that will that will forgive you. which nigeria the nigeria that gets job or the nigeria that that have electricity which nigeria or the one that have hospital which nigeria or the one that some families some families in nigeria their parents their brothers their sisters has been deleted by the boko haram by the headsman their houses has been burnt down they live in a camp they have been chased out from their village under the table of Muhammad Buhari and he coming out after eight years to tell Nigerians to please forgive him. And Garuba Shehu said, Garuba Shehu said that Nigerians have good heart that they will forgive. So they will come and do all these things to Nigerians. And they said Nigerians have good heart. That's why we not gonna have good heart. Even God, no go it. Even God, eh? No go forgive them. God. As good as God is, as merciful as God is, God handed the 210 million over to his hand and he led people to come and destroy them and delete them and burn their houses down and kidnap their children and their mothers and their father. And you want which one will forgive you? I don't know which one. I'm glad he's going to Adama. He said he will never spend even not even one night in, in Asorok. Why would he even? Why would he? Even in a, in his estate, <laughs> in Daura, it's not safe there. Oh. Because Daura people still don't have light. Oh. Daura people don't get hospital. Oh. They don't get road. Oh. It is the same Daura that he was going some time ago. And the Boko Haram said, eh -eh. is he not this man? What is he going to Daura to do? They threaten to bring the plane down. Oh. Uh, uh, a headsman who threatened to bring the um, plane down low, unless they would give so 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 amount. And they paid them for them for him to go to Daura when he is the president of Federal Republic of Nigeria. And now that he's not going to be Federal Republic of Nigeria president, he think he will be safe in Daura with the same people. That Boko Haram have deleted. I beg go watch the video, my dear, because the anger in me will make me say something stupid. So I want you to watch it yourself. And when you finish watching it, just leave a message. Leave me a message, detailed message. Let us let us have conversation about these people. What these people have done in our country, eh? It's only God that will deal with them. So my lovely people, from my heart to you. Tonight. President Mohamed Buhari's statement when he hosted some Nigerians at the presidential villa gets our attention. is asking for pardon for those he feels he may have offended in action or in word. We'll be getting to know what has become of the Buhari eight-year journey since 2015. As the president said, he will be leaving the villa and he will not spend one day. In fact, he said he will be staying very far away from the villa uh, so that he can get the, necess uh, the, the needed retirement from office. We'll be getting to speak with one of President Buhari's uh, aid tonight on the program and analyze some of these issues for you. <laughs> 
Now, for those who now uh, remember what the president said sometimes ago in one of the interviews in Dara, his uh, hometown in Katsina State, where he said he cannot wait until he gets out of office, um, we'll be probably not be surprised by his statement today uh, when he says as soon as he retired or leaves office on the 29th of May, he will not spend one single night in the villa and in fact, he said he will move very far away from the uh, presidential villa, the seat of power, for a needed retirement. The president today, after observing the Ida Fitri prayers uh, at the praying ground here in Abuja, the president also proceeded with top government officials to the banquet hall where he hosted several government functionaries. It was at that moment where the president made it known uh, what perhaps is on his mind. The president has said, look, I may have offended a few people, but please forgive me. Let me allow you to listen to the president. I can't even wait to go home. If you said that, I'll move to the general public. Um, <laughs> I think the governor a minister than the president twice. Uh, I think God has given me an incredible opportunity to serve the country. And I uh, thank God for that. So please, whoever thought that there has been some form of injustice on him, we are all human. There is no doubt I had some people and I wish they would pardon me. And those that think that uh, I've had them so much to inside in me. Well, we will be taking a look at what this means, that statement, what it means, and perhaps some of the dimension to all of these issues. I'm being joined by Mr. Garba Shehu, the President's special, uh, Senior Special Assistant on Media and Publicity, who joins us uh, from uh, in Abuja virtually. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Shehu, and uh, happy Eddie Fetri, uh, Fetri celebration to you. And you too, thank you. Thank you so much indeed. Um, well, uh, it could be on a light note, but seriously also, because I know in the last uh, 48 hours or so, there's been a back and forth between the government and uh, the governor of Benue State and the villa. So when the president said, if I had offended you, forgive me, does this include the governor of Benue State? The president of Nigeria does not have a ill will towards anyone. Uh, this is clearly demonstrated over the years by his actions. As we speak today, there is no politician in detention for things that they have said against President Muhammad Buhari. There is no journalist in detention for things that they have written or said against President Muhammad Buhari. So Muhammad Buhari does not personally hold grudges against individuals. He's a very forgiving person, and this is why he maintains a steady, stable health. He goes to bed with nothing against anyone on his mind, and he sleeps very soundly. Uh, why does he think that he has offended uh, people? Perhaps his critics would have said, Okay, you came to office on a tripod of promise to fix the economy and insecurity in Nigeria and, of course, fight corruption. If it's based on those policies, maybe that's one reason they may hold a grievance on him and or with him and perhaps thinking as a president delivered on the promises that he made to Nigerians, now that he knows he has just about 40 days to leave office, does the president feel that in some way there may have been some shortcomings in the delivery of his promises to Nigerians? Uh, two things, uh, Sheung, I would like to say. One is that, um, yes, the president uh, asked for, for pardon from those he may have offended. But uh, it's clear that there was no personal or specific admission of wrongdoing on his part. 
And two, I think we should not take the, the speech out of the context in which it was made. This essentially was a religious get together. Occasions like this, and I, I believe it is in all the scriptures, prayers are always said for the victim and the abuser. It happens. And uh, uh, for those coming from the background of Islamic religious faith, responsibility means more than what it ordinarily does to a number of people. As president and commander in chief, the president has a responsibility, that, that's a, the Islamic law, for everything that happens in the country, daytime, nighttime, whatever season. In the same way as you, as the head of a family, right, seems to be some, uh... may not buy, and the president may not buy himself gone out to offend somebody. But all of the authorities that, that report to him, whether they are tax authorities or financial crimes authorities, in the conduct of their duty, they may cross some lines. As far as that context is concerned, President Muhammad Wari is equally liable, in fact, singly responsible for being head of state. So, if you now look at it, uh, Mr. Shewu, uh, although the president and governors have the, uh, the prerogative to give pardon and clemency, but I don't know if some of the Nigerians whom he's asking for their pardon, uh, they, uh, they will find it in their heart on a day like this to pardon the president. <laughs> and let's put into, <laughs> into context this time around uh, the performance of President Buhari. Uh, I mean, Governor Autumn might be very critical of this government, but the question is that many Nigerians have died under the watch of President Buhari, who in 2015 said that he will fight insecurity to his nails. And those who will say, in fact, things may have gotten worse under President Buhari's watch. This might be one of the reasons he's asking for forgiveness. But how much of forgiveness can some of those who have lost their uh, the, uh, their siblings, their friends, their family members will be able to give for those for that government will promise that it's going to secure their lives, but they find it difficult to live peacefully. As the people of Southern Kaduna today, they will tell you a story, a sad one, isn't it? Well, um, let me say that I believe that uh, Nigerians are large-hearted people. They will forgive the president. And my hope and wish is, let's not make this a conversation on Mr. Autumn and his Benway, now that the people of Benway have passed a judgment on his eight years in office. Now, uh, this is the beauty of democracy. The day of judgment is the day you go to the voter to ask for a new mandate. And the voter has the right to decline in a working democracy. And this is exactly what happened in Benway. So as we said in our statement, if anybody wants to know who is responsible, she who is chiefly responsible for all that had happened in Benway State, talk to the Benway people. That's all. Well, I mean, also, I mean, that was just a premise to reference the insecurity situation in the country. And I'm saying that um, uh, if you, you can only pass or fail in the area of insecurity that the president said he was going to fix, could this be a failure, one of the things that the president is asking for pardon for? Well, you were, if the event uh, this uh, morning was um, aired live, you probably would have seen religious leaders, Muslim and Christian, speak about how much difference the president has made to the fact that as a bishop, as a, as a presiding bishop or imam, you cannot enter your place of worship, church or mosque, without being screened you know, for bombs or weapons that you may be taken into 
that place of worship. It was that bad. And they were thankful to the president that all of that has, has gone. And, and let me say that, looking at the overall picture of security in the country, yes, it is that, it is true that there are still, there are still flashes of insecurity that happen in, 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 in a number of places. But if you look at the, the big picture, the overall picture, looking at where we were coming from, where the, there was a total loss of control, where this country had been divided into two, with a section of it declared of a, a republic of some sort, with their flag, with their system of administration, taxation, and all of that. Come on, we have come a long way. We've gone very, very far away from those situations. And, and, and it is not as if anyone is letting up. President will work hard, will continue to do so until his last day in office on these matters. Well, that is a naughty area that if we dwell on it, we might debate from now till tomorrow morning. But uh, one area also that the president promised to, to really deal with is the area of the economy. But, I mean, I wouldn't even want to go into some aspect of the economy, but I will go into the aspect that is a bit very worrisome and is also going to affect the issue of security. About half of our population are poor. The NBA statistics uh, shows that um, we have uh, about uh, 82 million Nigerians living in poverty. In fact, another figure which is also staggering is the fact that about 150 million Nigerians are in multi-dimensional poverty. I mean, if a president were to come eight years ago, and we're looking back now to assess, if the president is to graduate after an, in an eight-year study, for someone who said, he's got what it takes to fix the economy, and you are leaving 153 or so million Nigerians out of the 200 million in multidimensional poverty. I don't know how this government is going to rate or grade itself or half of the population who cannot even afford a dollar to feed a day. Isn't that embarrassing or perhaps disappointing for this government itself? Hmm. Well, I want you to reflect for a moment uh, and to think, it, it, uh, if the country had been governed in the last eight years for another person, some, somebody other than President Muhammad Buhari, what would have been the situation, given his background of strict discipline, almost a Spartan lifestyle? And consider the, the, the massive corruption we are coming from years of, of PDP uh, that, that, uh, that we had inherited. Consider a situation in which this country, as we speak today, was without the massive agricultural program that has seen as, seen as exit importation of so many food items, including rice. Imagine what poverty would have been like if the infrastructure had, that had collapsed before we came in, had continued to go in that same direction, that you didn't have the second Niger Bridge, you didn't have all of the massive projects going on, Lagos, Ibadan, Abuja, Kaduna, Kano, the, the, the gas pipeline linking Ajakuta to Kano, and all of these infrastructure deficits, including power generation, which has today risen to nearly 20,000 or even more megawatts. These are jobs. This is, this is, this is welfare for Nigerian people. So yes. what, what are the statistics yeah. saying otherwise? If you are referencing these, well, yes, we can see them. But the statistics by the MBS that is probably controlled by the government itself is giving figures that 3.3% of our Nigerians are unemployed. Mr. Shewu. These things that you are saying don't you, reflect Shem, in the figures. Shem, Shem, the crisis, cost of living crisis, is, is a global phenomenon. Nigerians need to just look beyond our shops and, and see how 
national economies are going into dissolution, liquidation. See, see what's happening to Kenya, to South Africa, to Ghana, all of these countries, even Europe itself. And so therefore, there is a global crisis that has afflicted the entire, you know, you know, you know, you know global economy. COVID came, when COVID came, all nations of the world recessed in their economies, except perhaps China. And, 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 and this has continued to be compounded by crisis in supply systems, again, warranted by ongoing situation between Ukraine and Russia and all of that. So what am I saying? That everyone is managing a bad situation and Nigeria is not doing badly in doing this. Give me a moment, uh, Mr. Shaw. Uh, let me come to our Abuja studio here with uh, China Television uh, election consultant and political analyst, Mr. Judy Ojo. Thank you so much indeed for coming, out, uh, okay. for coming on the program on the day as this. I know you are gaily dressed, perhaps. You visited a few friends for the celebration. But, I mean, when you hear the president ask for forgiveness or saying, please pardon me, what comes to your mind? I, I think he's expressing his humanity uh, he's a human being, like he said, he's, he's a human being like you and I. And in the course of his action or inaction, he definitely will have stepped on toes. And uh, he has chosen 38 days to the exit of his administration to plead for forgiveness. Uh, but um, he's not the only one. Uh, a few days ago, Governor Ganduje Ganduje of uh, Kano states was the first to come out to say uh, people of Kano should forgive him. He, has, he possibly has stepped on some toes. And it's normal and natural for politicians to do that. Even PDP, after 16 years of misgovernance, uh, came out uh, after the Ekwerebadu report. Uh, yes. I think uh, it Uche was Prince, Prince Uche 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 down uh, yeah. Yeah. in Abuja. God yeah. bless you. So yeah. you can see that that's the whole political party to say, look, Nigerians, forgive us. We have, we have heard. We committed a lot of atrocities. We did things the way it should not be done. So uh, it's, it's in the way of politicians to seek forgiveness. And it is also in the ways of every human being who believes in a supreme God to seek forgiveness. After all, the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in <laughs> So, um, it's not out of place, but um, my own point of departure is, yes, there are actions and inactions. There are those actions that are first major. You know, you, you cannot help. So, Things just have to happen the way they are. And there are those, you know, somebody will say error of the mind, error of the art. Um, let me put this in context. Mr. President, in putting Nigeria through the excruciating pains of Nara redesign, and people were complaining. Is that forgivable? Well, it's not for Nigerians. Because there are, they, they, because there are people, businesses, there are no, they, no more. God bless you. Because of that, uh, because, because of that policy. And people were people begging. People were warning. Uh, people they? warned. People begged. People said, look, Mr. President, this isn't working. This is the eve of election. There are those who lost election in APC because of the president action. I sat there on this platform. Part of the reason Ashwa Dubala Ahmed Tinubu lost the election in Lagos was because of this excruciating pain. Recall that he himself came out that they deliberately, of course, he, he may say he was quoted out of context, but he said they hoarded money, they hoarded fuel, but he will, he will contest and win. I mean, paraphrasing. Mr. Ojo, there were people who stripped themselves naked out of frustration in, banks, in the banking in the hall. Banking hall. People had money, but they couldn't get access to it. Understandable reasons that the CBN gave that to cop this, to do this, and do that. But the question is that how would you make policies that will make life more miserable and, for and, the populace, and, for and, the larger and, population? And on top of it, February 8th, the Supreme Court, the highest court of the land, said, look, I'm giving this order pending the determination of the 
merit of the case, let status quo ante be maintained. The president, after that Supreme Court decision, addressed the nation and did a selective, you know, uh, application. Said, okay, 200 naira will be recirculated, the whole 200 naira will be recirculated in, uh, for another 60 days, but for 500, uh, 500 naira, 1,000 naira. So I, I think the president at that point should have observed the rule of law, observed the, uh, agree with the Supreme Court uh, the justices, and allow, the, and you could see that even when the final determination came, I think, um, uh, was it March 25 or thereabout, uh, the CBN governor was still waiting on the president. I think it's uh, my elder brother, uh, Gamba Shehu, that threw a may failure under the balls by saying he shouldn't be waiting on the president to implement the Supreme Court decision. But that is the story. People right. lost business. That is one policy. People, then, the, what, about, you, you, what about oil theft? What do you have to say about oil theft? A military general, a major general retired in this country, under, under him, Nigeria lost almost half of his daily oil production to crude oil theft. Can that be pardonable? Is that pardonable? I'm not judging. No, no, you are the political I, analyst. Well, I'm not judging the president. I'm only throwing the issue out there. No, but that, the, the question is that, and the reason why I'm asking you, if someone slaps you and is asking for forgiveness, it's up to you to know whether or not you are forgiven. But, but, but in this respect, I, I can say, well, <laughs> whatever it is, I forgive you, Mr. President. But those who are impacted most negatively, those who lost their means of livelihood, who lost their lives, who lost their businesses because of certain action and decision of the president, something that fall within his purview, would they want to easily forgive? The point is whether they even forgive or they don't forgive, there is little or nothing they can do about it. Uh, to her, is human. You remember that when uh, Father uh, Bishop uh, Kuka came out with uh, that homily um, uh, early in the year, uh, the presidency disagreed vehemently with him. But the public, what he said resonated more with the public. Because, yes, one thing I must say is that Mr. President is not a sole administrator. Governance is of three arms and three tiers. We have the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary, and we have the, uh, the federal, state, and local government. But like Malangaba Shehu said in his earlier comment, that the president is asking for forgiveness even on behalf of some of his appointees, who has and those ministries, who, departments, and agencies. There are those who blame the president that he, he, do, he gives people responsibility without acting. Without and proper oversight. Is that pardonable? Without, what? I'm no, asking rhetorical no, no, questions. No, no, is, because we are dropping no, issues and policy decisions exactly. and style of leadership of the president that, look, it is a precedent. Anybody could come into office and say, after eight years, I will ask for forgiveness and I will move on. It's not that easy. Because policy and decision of leaders have consequences on their lives. Look at how many Nigerians that have left this country because of hardship that they experienced, because of the threats to their business, because of insecurity. So it, are those pass, pardonable? For, for me, no action is not pardonable. Uh, everything is pardonable. And even if he didn't ask for forgiveness, many Nigerians are saying, we can't wait to let this man go. He said he's tired. He said he wants to go and rest. Let him go and rest. I read this, um, the published speech. One, Mr. President has been one of the luckiest, and he admitted earlier today that he's been one of the luckiest Nigeria. He has been everything anybody could aspire to be in Minister, life. Minister, governor? Minister, uh, no, President military Christ, administrator. Sector, yeah. Way back in 1976, <laughs> military administrator, Minister of Petroleum Resources, and he's under the same minister with the, all the experiences that we have, the highest level of oil theft and the, in and the, Nigeria. And the president who was also who is also minister, the substantive minister yeah. of petroleum so, resources. Yeah, we just have 60, 60 seconds, but I'd like you to, uh, to throw your, your final thought tonight. 
is it possible that the president will if, uh, erase uh, some of the bad memories of these last eight years from the minds of Nigerians? A lot of them that may not be happy with him, that may be so agitated that I think that this government's eight years was a total failure. I don't know anyone who is saying, except uh, for opposition political parties uh, that ran in the last election, I, I don't know anyone saying that uh, eight years is a total failure. But uh, government policies under President Muhammad Buhari are driven by the best of intentions, never driven by reasons of wickedness or ill will towards the national population. When you talked extensively on the currency exchange a phenomenon, you, you, you obviously also ignore the fact that this is an administration that had launched a series of economic reform programs, one of which targeted the massive corruption that we inherited from the PDP years. And what it meant is that election should not be, should not, should not be, it, this country had had good elections, off-season elections from the time President Muhammad Buhari took power to now. And every assessment that had been made came to say that good election, good turnout, all of that, uh, however, the influence of money. Money has been a big issue. So what is wrong in saying, well, can we have Nigerians decide who to lead them uh, away from the influence of money? That's just one thing. And, uh, and, 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 and see, see all of these things that about the kidnapping that people are talking about these days. When the currency thing was going on, did the kidnappers move against Nigerians? So these things also have their benefits. All right, Mr. Ashew, yeah. I must sincerely thank you, and I wish you and the team the very best as you prepare to transition out of office then bring in the new administration. Thank you so much, Mr. Gabba Ashew, for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it.